this set of the alleyway looks exactly like the real alleyway. That's right. Well, why don't we just shoot in the real alleyway? Because it's a real Hollywood movie. No, yeah, sounds good. Okay. Hi, folks. I'm Ignacy Vishnevetsky. And I'm Alex Depp. Today, we're talking about The Disaster Artist, a film about the greatest bad film of our time, The Room. Welcome to Film Club. So let me ask you a question. Can you imagine this movie making a lick of sense to someone who has never seen The Room before? This is barely a film, right? <laughs> I mean, you to appreciate it, you do have to go in with some first-hand knowledge of, of The Room as yes. a film. A, a very terrible movie that uh, this guy, Tommy Wiseau, made, financed himself, he starred in himself, wrote himself. How much is it? It'll be $18. Keep, go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. It's a very overblown melodrama featuring a lot of dropped subplots and bizarre <laughs> overdubbing of The scenes. room you're talking about. The room we're Not talking about. Not the disaster about. artist. Yeah. Also the disaster artist. And obviously that is, that's the built-in audience for this thing. Yes. You know, I saw this at a festival, as I assume a lot of other critics did, where your whole audience is full of people who are excited to see a movie about The Room. And they're going to overlook the fact that this is narratively a wreck. Yeah. Um, that it's a film that opens with testimonials about... Yes, the movie opens with testimonials and it ends with with side-by-side comparisons of James Franco's performance as Tommy Wiseau and scenes from The Room. So recreations from the room and the room side by side, as if to say, "Look, see how see how well he got that impression down." Not it's hit not her. True. It's not true. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. I, I did, did not, not hit her. her. I, did I did not. not. Oh hi, Mark. Oh hi, Mark. And by the way, it is an impression. There are some people who are kind of losing their minds about this performance. Um, Franco is doing a very. Uh, I, I feel like a very precise and accurate impression of Tommy Wiseau. But both as a filmmaker and as an actor, I don't think he's giving this guy any inner, like any deeper layers. The thing he's is, not figured out the pathology of yeah, Tommy Wiseau. You know? the, the, the psychology, anything or, yeah. of Wiseau or his relationship with Greg Sestero, is the author of yeah. the memoir that this is based on, co-star of the room. He's played in this film by Dave Franco, who looks nothing like right. Greg Sestero, neither. James Franco doesn't look anything like Tommy Wiseau either. But... Not all of our viewers know this, but James Franco has directed something like uh, 20, 80, 130 feature films. <laughs> They're all quite bad. He yeah. is, like, if there's any value to Franco's career as a director is that it is definitive proof that you actually need talent to become a film director, that you can't just yeah. become a good film director through repetition and practice. Because yeah, yeah, he hasn't, he's, he's, he's become just middling rather than offensively crappy, like some of his early films that sure. I believe were only seen by critics like myself who were unlucky enough to have been assigned to review them. Right. Uh, but there's a reason that this one is being, I think, I think more liked than, than his average work and is probably going to be seen by who knows how many more people than his average film. Than all of his other films combined, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, and multiplied. I think it's fold. that it takes basically that, that kind of sturdy generic Judd Apatow buddy comedy template and applies it to the story of the room. I mean, at heart, this is a, this is a basically a movie about about an unlikely friendship between these two guys. And when in the early parts, when it is about an unlikely friendship, yeah. it's actually okay. This yeah. could become a good movie. But it is just, you know, part of what's so fascinating about the room mm-hmm. is the fact that it feels so personal. That it's it's such a strange film that clearly means a lot to to this crazy tyrant making it, uh, <laughs> which this film doesn't doesn't handle at all. He no, because sort of... the movie tiptoes around him, I think, partially because it's been made with Wiseau's blessing. Yes, but also because I don't think it's figured out. I don't think it's gotten to the bottom of Tommy Wiseau as a character. Mm-hmm. You know, and the whole film is about is supposed to be about at least partially about figuring out who he is and why he would make this thing. But the movie just punts on that, and there, there are mo- <laughs> and there are moments here that that are even below the level of craftsmanship of the room. I mean, I don't know Dave, about that. Dave Franco's that's beard, a beard is Sestero. <laughs> you could argue so that bad. that's uh, he's he's creating an intentional kinship with Tommy Wiseau or something. I do think the most interesting thing about this movie, and it's not it's not a developed idea at all, but is that one could argue that that Franco gets being a bad filmmaker 
wanting to be a genius, having pretensions of seriousness. So maybe he sees a little bit of himself in Tommy Wiseau. I wish that the film felt as personal as the room feels. Oh. Oh. Cut. Why are you cut, Sandy? This is great. This is real acting. If you're going to ride around with the dress, maybe do it before you shoot yourself in the head and blow your brains out. I disagree.